Hey, how y'all doing? This is Jason Ritchie here. Now listen, I got something really special for you today. Today, you're going to get to sit in on a Skype lesson that I did with another student named Tal Fisher from Israel. Tal is an incredibly talented and sharp young man. And when we recorded this lesson, I couldn't help but think throughout the lesson how great it would be to put on YouTube. So I gave Tal an email and said, hey bro, what do you think about me giving you a couple of free lessons on Skype? This is a Skype lesson you're about to see in exchange for you letting me put this lesson on YouTube. And he said, sure, Jason. So here you go. Enjoy the lesson. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. All right, cool. So here's what we're going to do today. Okay. So today we're going to take a break from all of this mind-melting, like, hard academic work. Okay. And we're just going to look at, like, how can I get better at playing in this scale without doing these exercises, right? Like these exercises are clearly great for thinking and re-evaluating where you're at in the scale, where the next note is above you, where the next note is below you, all of that stuff. Yeah. But after a while, um, first of all, they become muscle memory too. You have to break them down into smaller sections to get anything beneficial out of them okay that's something we could talk about later too right if we haven't already but like the other thing i can do is just take a look at little groups of notes in the scale in different ways that i can play them and improvise with them so like let's just take the first three notes one draw right or not the first three notes but but let's just let's just take the let's go two draw two draw double bend the flat seven and one draw okay and let's just look at that okay so there's one combination of three notes that I can do right so the other combination now I call this I don't know if there's a real word for it, but but I, I, I call it triangulating. So I'm like taking a triangle and I'm looking at three notes as a triangle, okay? So what I'm gonna do is look at all the different combinations of those three notes that I can do. So there's, there's one, another one would be backwards. <laughs> Right? You can try that one. Right. I, I, I kind of use this little tuss sound when, when I'm lip pursing them. And it, it gives each note kind of like its own particular value, like definition. Yeah. You might want to try that too. You know, it's good for... Uh, Nice, nice. So then I could just, so then I could go, so there was one draw, right? Two bend, two draw. So then I could go also two draw, right? Down to one draw to two bend. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Or I could go from two bend to two draw, to one draw, right? Or I could go from one draw to two draw, right? And I can just mix them up, okay? So what I can do is just get a simple drum beat going. Just a one, two, three, four.
right and just start taking three notes in the minor pentatonic and, and just working them right and working all of the different combinations and then all you do is just take the next three notes just start working those three notes and just kind of go up the harp and just kind of like start creating like a language of triplets that you can use in in and switch around in any different combination of orders right now what you'll find man when you're working on this stuff is that certain combinations of notes are going to work better than other combinations for a couple of reasons like number one the the notes in that combination are more applicable to the chord like in the first one we had we had a, a root a five and a flat seven so those are obviously going to be the m more important notes and they're going to be more useful than maybe like the five the minor third and the four <laughs> Right. It's not going to sound as fun to jam on those three notes, especially if you don't have a, a band or, or a jam tracks going. OK, but um, some cool things happen from doing it. Um, first of all, what we find is that those three notes may not be very helpful in second position. But the same three notes may be very valuable in another position. So physically learning the combinations of like how to do these three notes in different places is super good. And, you know, and you need to do that work, right? If you want to like find cool things too. Like, for example, a lot of the licks that we hear from Little Walter and Cotton and Junior Wells and everybody else. They're popular for a couple of reasons. Number one, they're notes that sound good against the chord. Number two, they're frequently easy to play or easier. So what we find as we study these triangulations and these different combinations of notes is that every now and then there is a combination of notes that sounds really, really good but is difficult to play. So this is why like more people ha haven't done it. Okay, but that doesn't mean it doesn't sound good or that it can't be done. It just requires more practice. You know, like one of the ones I can think of is like just a simple, right? So it's not easy to, it that's not that takes time to to get to the point where you can right so we'll hear guys play that lick but not like very fast they'll play right so you know but we won't hear any of this Right, we won't hear that. Or, or here's a good one. Like, we don't hear this very often. Just three draw a bent to four draw. Which sounds awesome. Everybody goes like this. Nobody skips that and just goes, oh. right? Which sounds killer. Sounds killer. And it's something that like I use all the time. And I discovered it by doing this kind of work of like, oh man, like if I just don't play four blow and I go right from four draw to three draw half step bend, I might be on to something. Okay. So 
you do this kind of work with like different scales in different positions and you'll find that you start coming up with stuff like you know you could just take you know like just take and then and then maybe add four notes right like one draw two draw bend two draw three draw bend So just spending time on on one uh, on one combination of notes is gonna like yield like huge results. Like one of the things that I did when I was like younger and even crazier than I am now was I would take tape and put it over the top of the harmonica. So I only had four, four holes on the bottom, and I would just play all the and the amount of times tall that i tried to go over into the tape area even knowing that it was taped like i know that it's taped but my physical uh instincts were more powerful than my knowledge of what was going on can i ask you about the approach that you take when you uh, when you go into this very like highly electric uh, speed uh, with this uh, uh, you know what I'm talking about when you take this uh, these triplets and you start playing it fast and at some point it gets like all jumbled together but nicely <laughs> there is something that you like think about like some some encore that you keep in mind some mental image or something that you use sure man okay like so okay I'll do my best to you stop me if i'm if i if i go astray okay stop me if i'm like not answering the right question okay but yeah like well the first thing i'm doing is i'm i'm thinking about th this subject called double time okay like you know so like the rhythm is <laughs> Right? And then I want to. Right. So I, I want to double that rhythm. So one is. Right. So this is a kind of like, so I'm just trying to think, can I double time the rhythm? So, so sometimes like. If I want to do it, but I don't feel it, I'm going to mess up. <laughs> so, like, the kind of, like, the better I get at it, like, the more naturally it just starts to occur. So, I'm, like, into a jam tracks, and I start off on, like, a little lick. And then I just kind of go, oh, wait a minute. I can, if I wanted to, I go... Right, I, I can kind of feel that I can do it. Okay, so that's one thing. Okay, the other thing is that there is some cheating that's happening in, in some of these scenarios. Okay, like, okay. I can double time really well and stay in the blues scale. I can double time okay in the pentatonic, in the minor pentatonic. Um, I can double time really well in major pentatonic, a little bit in like some of the third position minor scales, but not as good as I'd like. But if I ignore the scales, all of them 
and just kind of play whatever notes are there, I can fucking double time really good. Right. Like, if I just want to... Right, right, right. So, like, I'm using some, like, tricks, right? I, I don't know if we've talked about them. Um, did... Did, have we have we discussed Pat Ramsey? Uh, only by name. You didn't mention like a specific approach. Okay. I think it's time that I throw you this like gem of fun information, right? So, like I said at the beginning of today's lesson, there's nothing academic about what we're doing. Okay, it's just harmonica talk, okay? So, Pat is an interesting player because um, he sounds like a guitar player when he plays harmonica. Um, and he uses, like, loosely based, uh, like, he uses, like, a combination of notes that that uh, I call the mixed up Lydian. <laughs> okay. So it's kind of like a mixed Lydian scale, but it has some blue notes in it. Okay. Now, there's another thing that he's doing that, you know, a lot of people who play fast, Sugar Blue, John Popper, Pat Ramsey, Peter Madcat Ruth, Myself, L.D. Miller, okay, a lot of these people, we get accused and frequently dismissed as pattern players. So they're like, now, this isn't true across the board. It's not true as an overall truth. However, however... There are breathing patterns that will enable you to be able to play faster and sound good right away, right away. And I'm going to give you a couple of them today. Okay, so the, the, the formula for Pat, for playing fast like Pat, it, it's, this is, of course, not a... a 100% accurate formula, but it's going to give you a lot of what's happening. Okay, so and that formula is draw, draw, blow, blow. It's that simple. You draw a note, you draw another note, you blow a note, you blow another note, you draw a note, you draw another note, blow, da da dee do 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 right? And it's not too hard. So let's start with like the basic, okay? So we're gonna go from like three draw to two draw, from four blow to three blow, from four draw to three draw. See, there's a pattern is emerging already, okay? Yeah. From five blow to four blow. From five draw to four draw. And then from six blow to five blow. So let's try this right now. Go ahead. All right, yeah, yeah. But end on the blow note. And uh, yeah, just do it. Yeah. So now try to come down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so like already like what I'm going to do with this with this combination of notes 
is is the same thing that we were doing at the beginning of the lesson. I'm going to shorten it, okay? So I'm going to start like with something like All right, so try that, you know. Just the first combination. Get a little me. Yeah. Stop there. Right. But, uh, so so now so now try starting on blow four and going down and doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah, that was good, but you got it. That was on five blow. So start on. Very, very good. So, so I can also like flip it upside down. Like I can start on one combination and then move to another combination using the same notes, just emphasizing a different starting point. And, and it sounds like this. Okay, um, go ahead and turn your computer screen for me a little bit. I can't see you. Oh, Not that yeah. it matters. Yeah, there we go. That's better. So, Thank you. So, like, one of the first things I can do is, like, start moving this around. Okay, so th the next thing I can do Okay, besides shortening it and working on all of the different combinations of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? As I can abbreviate that count from one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four into a, a miniature triplet. So like I'm counting one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, 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 four, 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 one, two, three, 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 four. Okay, so like there's all these different little rhythmic patterns that I can come up with that are like basic snare drum paradiddle exercises, okay? But as it relates to harmonica, the most important thing I can do to make this shit sound good, like the reason that Pat Ramsey is important in my world more than Sugar Blue more than John Popper, more than anybody else, is his use of bend notes and blue notes in the bottom end of the instrument. So, like, if you can start bending in, in, in and around these combinations, you're going to start getting results that sound less Celtic and Irish and that kind of thing, and sound more like cool blues guitar licks, or even Hammond organ licks, okay? So like. So simply by playing that exact same lick and bending the three, 
I've really changed the vibe of that lick. Right. So, so go ahead and try that. Like, try just bending it a little. Right. Right. So, like, I hear you kind of, like, making some mistakes on below that like when you're trying to keep it going so like let me give you some examples of what pat does on the first two holes to kind of get you going okay so like some of it's what we were working on before like this the, the triangulation triplet things some of it's that okay <laughs> And unfortunately, there's no breathing pattern there that's going to give you instant results. Okay. Okay, you got to develop it, but it doesn't take that long. It's still kind of a breathing pattern. Okay, except the breathing pattern has changed from two draw to one draw. That's the first part, to two draw bend to one draw, and then just repeat. You try. Right, now reverse that. Right. And then you can put these two together, like you can do two of one, two of another. That's three. Right. The, the only problem is you run out of air. You, you're like, <gasps> you're right. So what do you do? You put in a blow note. Okay. Two blow, one blow. And here re-emerges this draw, draw, blow, blow pattern again, okay? Right, so you get this... combinations that you can use in there to like there's all different ways you can do it with it like just like there are triangulations with three notes there's quad elations right with the four notes but like here's the best one to work on though like right away is go down and then come up so this is figure one this is figure two this is figure three so I'm going to go one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two. So. Try that. Right. So now here's the cool thing about what you just learned. It's what I call a movable lick. So it's something that you can do in one place that you can also do in a few other places. And the effect of how well that works depends on the notes that are involved. It also depends on the scale that you're using. So certain combinations of these bend, bend, draw, draws are going to have better effects in certain scales than they will in others. 
and they're going to have better effects in different positions. Okay, so you can use this same combination. Okay, in third position, you just got to start on different notes. And resolve on different notes. So it just takes a little bit of adjusting to take the same patterns and apply them to different positions. But let's look at this, this movable lick thing. So we have... Now, if I move up one hole, I can use it like in a major pentatonic way. Right? And so it doesn't, the note combination is not as cool as the other one because it has a repeating uh, two draw. The, the, the repeating root of, of E in this case is on That's three it. well. What? It reminds me of uh, when uh, players play saxophone, there's a technique when uh, they move between different fingerings for the same note. And it's uh, kind of cool. It reminds me of that. You know this? Yeah, yeah. And, and like the, 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 the real effect is not even about the notes. It's about the rhythm. Yeah. So it can almost be any combination of notes as long as they're in the same key, right? Like, even if they're not, even if they're not in the same key, they, they can still work. Now, so, so move up to three and try that, Tal. Right, right. Now, here's a cool one. So the first one was pretty cool. The second one was, eh, I don't know. And maybe in major pentatonic, it'll sound good. The third one is heavy, baby. Four draw. Three draw, four draw bend, three draw, four blow, three blow. Right, so try that one. Yes. Now listen, listen, man. All the mistakes that you make while trying to execute the exercise, they're new licks. They're new licks. That's what they are. Like every time you mess up and go instead of it's a new lick. Right? Right. So, so, so you're going to like discover all kinds of different combinations that are not part of what I showed you today, but that are just as valid rhythmically and melodically as, as anything that I am teaching presently. The real development comes from stringing this bending business into the very first lick that we learned today, the mixed up Lydian. So getting into the ability to go. Right, so
so like, and then and then what you do is you you, you, you develop this. Try that. Yeah. Now yeah. Now come down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One more time. Yeah. Close. Perfect. Perfect. So you start stringing these things together and you get this ability to move up and down the harp with these breathing patterns. And then you're just like loosely decorating the mixed up Lydian with these blue notes. Okay. Then what you do is you stop doing that in certain places. You don't want to be all the time going. I've heard players who do that. And it's it's exhausting after a little while. It's just right like so what you want to do is decorate it with licks like we were doing in the beginning of the lesson little pentatonic and blues scale shit that you can kind of change up a little bit like right and so just kind of like making it more decorative so there's other tricks though that you can do within this So, like, here's something you hear Pat doing a lot, and also me, because I come from Pat, okay? So, this is the stuff that sounds really, really cool, and it's not hard. It just takes a little while to get it so that it's habitual. Um, it's, what is hard is getting it out of your playing once you get it in okay i was list i did a live stream on facebook like i did like three in a row like one day each day i did a live stream on facebook for like 45 minutes where i played over jam tracks and when i listen back to it it's full of too many of these two note glisses right like they sound cool for a few minutes but then after a while my playing is so predictable you know exactly what i'm gonna do and that's something i need to work on okay but first you got to learn them and get them in there and then you got to worry about getting them out right so like here's a good example like so just like take the pentatonic scale <laughs> So just taking any two notes that are next to each other and doing a kind of little gliss on it, like. Go ahead and try that. I'm going to get some more coffee. Go ahead. scale they're they're around they're, there's places where the notes are next to each other but not many 
Not many. In the Mixolydian mode, or the major scale in first position, or the Dorian mode in third position, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Because you have like, look at the first, look at first position. So I can. It's the same. Okay. Modes. All right. What do you know about them? Uh, well, basically, you take a scale and you start on uh, one of the levels, for example, on the fourth, and then uh, you just play the scale from this uh, note, and uh, this is a mode. Exactly. Perfectly stated. Okay. So if everything revolves around the major scale, in first position. Okay, if everything revolves around that, then anything I learn in that position will apply to any of the seven modes. Okay, all I have to do is figure out what note to start on and what position that note is in. So like, if I look at the Mixolydian, well, if I look at the Dorian, the next note up. Okay. Okay, I can instantly. Right, I can I can move around the same way that I did. Now, same goes with the Mixolydian. All there. Same stuff, same exact tricks of the mouth, just sounds completely different because the notes relate to the chords in a different way. Okay, so it's the same physical exercises, the same head movements, same blow, blow, draw patterns emerge, same licks on the same holes, but a completely different sound. So it's like you're learning like to be like like all of a sudden like you can play all this stuff that you couldn't play before just by learning some basic like two note glisses. Right. So the next thing to do is do these things called three note glisses. So now I'm going to go. Try it. Yep, right. Right, right, and or seven draw. Right, right. So now I can take these three note glisses and put them in the same patterns. Thank <laughs> you. 
Right. And then and then on and on. Four note glisses. So like let's go back to Little Walter Land. Okay. Like forget all this crazy John Popper, Pat Ramsey stuff. Let's look at people like Little Walter and this guy William Clark. Okay, yeah. and let's look at some blues glisses in second position. So like taking it again, taking it out of the modal thing and, and not even thinking about that. Let's just think about like the, what the harmonica does well in cross harp against blues. So like I could start with like like we started with this one like Go ahead and do that one again. Right. So that sounds cool and everything. Okay? But those are those notes you know not all of them are well, like none of them are blue notes, none of them. So what I could do is like, instead of playing two blow, I could land on two draw double bend. Right. Yes, you're very good. So then I could add like, I could turn it into like a three note gliss and get a nice little glissando slash arpeggio, okay, with something like this. Which we hear, you know, William Clark and Little Walter. Right, so this kind of like rolling boom da da boom, boom da da boom, boom da da boom, boom da da boom. So try that one. the last note so I I can the notes don't even have to be next to each other I could Can become addictive and like you can do too much right because it's so once you get it it's so easy to kind of swing and roll and do all this kind of fun rhythmic stuff that it can actually take the place of meat and potatoes playing and you can get into this habitual glissando thing 
And all of a sudden you're playing as lacking substance. Okay. So use them in caution, but understand that no matter what, they're going to become a problem later. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way around it. If you learn them, they will be a problem. And then that's a good problem to have. It's like the same thing as vibrato. Like vibrato is a great thing. It's a wonderful thing. It's an incredibly expressive part of any instrument, of any instrument. However, however, if left unchecked, unattended, vibrato will take over and become the only thing that the audience ends up hearing about you. Yep. And this is a disaster. And it is very difficult to unlearn these habits that we develop from that, that takes so long to develop that once the, we finally get them, man, we can't control them. So yeah. So, and then what do we do to get rid of them? Go back to the scales. This way, I'm now moving away, moving around in a methodical way that has nothing to do with triangulations, triplets, shortened versions of the scales, licks, glissandos, or anything else. It has just to do with mathematics. It has just to do with the sequencing of an intelligent order of notes. Okay, that's all. And that helps us break the problems that we've developed by learning Pat. Right, because learning Pat Ramsey is always good, but it's always going to be a problem too later. It's going to be so hard to get out of it, right? And we're never going to, none of us, not me, not Clyde Ramsey, his son, none of us are ever going to sound like Pat. No matter how good we get, it's still not going to be as good as he did it. So what's the fucking point, right? You know what I mean? What, you know, you know, you get it as close as you can and then go, God, that man's amazing. And then say, fuck that dude. You know what I mean? Fuck that dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I got shit to play too, man, you know? Yeah. Well, that was insane lesson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I would love to put this whole lesson up on YouTube. You killed it. You killed it. <laughs>